starting off a trend which would eventually bubble over into a full-scale supercar war, the Porsche 959 would become one of the rarest and most valuable cars ever built, a phenomenal mixture of performance and styling which broke away from the company's regular models to create among the greatest driver's cars ever built, and one which is revered among fans of Porsches and regular car enthusiasts alike. The 959's origins stretch back to the beginning of the 1980s, where the Porsche company, whose corporate legacy began 30 years earlier at the end of World War II, had cemented itself as one of the most renowned sports car manufacturers in the world, the pinnacle of which was its superb rear-engine 911, one of the most sought-after sports car models in the world, and a machine that married incredible, nippy performance with an old-world styling which was able to endure even decades after it was first introduced. However, come 1980, the success of the 911 was now something of a yoke around the company's neck, as attempts to break away from this car's incredible popularity and diversify the range hadn't succeeded in the same manner, the firm's attempt at a low-slung mid-engine sports car in the 914 creating an oddly styled machine that failed to win over buyers, while front-engined efforts, such as the 924, struggled to provide the same levels of performance as the 911, compounded further by the high-end 928, a luxurious Grand Tourer in the same vein as contemporary Aston Martins and Maseratis, but a troublesome machine at best due to its complicated mechanics. This isn't to say that Porsche was a one-trick pony, as in the world of racing, the car builder had an undisputed global domination of the circuit, with the likes of the 917, the 936, the 956, and the 962 becoming legends of the on-track racing scene, while the 911 and its numerous 911-based variants such as the 935 scored victory after victory on lesser-known races and rallies worldwide, the success of Porsche's racing prowess reflected in the ever-increasing sales of the 911s, especially in the United States, although such commercial performance was considered unsustainable by the company management. In 1980, as Porsche faced its first loss-making year ever thanks to the underwhelming performance of the 924 and 928, Peter Schutz was appointed as CEO of the firm, and, in cooperation with experienced chief engineer Helmut Bott, began work on a new model that would reignite interest in the brand, their initial effort being to test the limits of the 911 platform, while also creating a more advanced car on which Porsche could rely for the foreseeable future. Being placed above the 911 and the 928 in the Porsche hierarchy, the company wanted to create a model that married the firm's most enduring traits, fusing the road-going abilities of the 911 with the race-winning prowess of their track cars, Bot also being allowed to develop a four-wheel drive system that would be used to improve the aging mechanics of the company lineup, development of the new model commencing from 1981. Originally, the intention of what was now dubbed the Porsche 959 was to be a four-wheel drive rally car for the famous Group B racing scene, which was reaching peak popularity thanks to its mixture of venues, paved and unpaved road surfaces, and the spectacular dedicated models introduced by competing car builders in order to secure victory in the coveted World Rally Championship. Examples of cars fighting for domination of the rally stage, including the Lancia Rally 037 and the Audi Quattro. At the time, Group B was the most demanding proving ground in the motorsport world, and competing in it would provide the most precise feedback for the sorts of advanced technologies Porsche planned to implement, as well as presenting brilliant publicity if their model was to secure a win on the rally stage, Porsche choosing to develop the 959 in a manner similar to the previous 911 by adopting what was essentially the same body, but with a lower and wider platform, although in reality Porsche had tested both aerodynamic advancements and use of super lightweight materials, including the fitting of aluminium on the bonnet and doors, while the rest of the body was created using a Kevlar composite, in order to achieve a curb weight of 1.4 tonnes, the floor of the 959 being specially constructed in lightweight Nomex rather than steel like on regular road cars to further reduce the car's bulk. Continuing the theme of the 911 by adopting the same wheelbase, Porsche took the basic principles used in constructing the legendary 93578 Moby Dick race car, and remodelled the body to create a profile which produced as much downforce as possible due to its long tail design. The resulting Group B concept car of 1983, which was unveiled at that year's Frankfurt Motor Show, being a superb low-slung machine, although the final production models would have this styling toned down significantly through the use of air vents on the rear wheel arches, the finalised Porsche 959 producing a drag coefficient of a mere 0.31. Weight shedding was the overarching goal throughout the entire development process, the five-spoke wheels being produced using a magnesium alloy instead of aluminium to lighten the load, while the spokes were made hollow in order to have a low mass but not at the expense of structural rigidity, 
these revolutionary lightweight wheels, being equipped with a pioneering tyre pressure monitoring system and Bridgestone RE71 Denlock run-flat rubber tyres, the first of their kind ever utilised on a production passenger car. For power, the 959 utilised an air-cooled 2.8-litre flat-six twin-turbocharged engine, which was largely derived from the 956 and 962 track cars, this engine producing 444 horsepower for the regular model and 508 horsepower for the later 959 Sport Edition, Porsche's engineers developing water-cooled heads with four valves per cylinder and sodium-filled exhaust valves, while in order to deliver the much-desired turbo power, KKK sequential turbochargers were added to ensure the smoothest power delivery and reduce turbo lag, as well as avoiding the somewhat vague and unpredictable power delivery noted on Porsche's other turbocharged models. To meet the needs of the Group B rally, the car also introduced a revolutionary four-wheel drive system named Porsche Steyr Kupplung, or PSK, which was capable of splitting and distributing torque between the axles to extract maximum grip under all road and weather conditions. This system, while working automatically, also being capable of manual control by the driver, who could select the torque split and the percentage of differential lock via a readable dashboard instrument, while transmission came in the form of a six-speed transaxle modified to include a specialised first gear, marked on the gear stick as G for Galanda, and was developed for off-road rally conditions, while the rest of the sequential gears followed a race-ready dogleg pattern, which put second and third gear in a direct line for better acceleration. In order to satisfy its proposed role as a rally car, an innovative electronically controlled adaptive suspension was developed consisting of eight hydraulically linked dampers, two for each wheel, and multiple control arm mounting points, which enabled variable ride heights ranging from 4.7 inches at its lowest setting for track racing, so as to reduce wind resistance, to 7.1 inches at its highest setting for off-road obstacle clearance on the rally stage, while a damping feature, known as 959 Comfort, was limited to three height settings, and could also be changed to maximise the 959's performance, with later versions of the car providing an automatic comfort damping system, which lowered at high speeds for greater stability. Launched at the 1985 Frankfurt Motor Show, production of the 959, due to its complicated mechanics and assembly, was outsourced to the Karosserie Bauer Company of Stuttgart, a coach builder which had most famously built folding top luxury variants of regular German road cars such as the BMW 02 Bauer Cabrio and the Opel Cadet C1.2 Aero, while options for the 959 included the regular Comfort with its 444 horsepower engine and the top of the range 508 horsepower 959 Sport, which possessed a 0 to 60 time of 3.7 seconds and a top speed of 198 miles an hour, making it the fastest production car in the world, a record that beat out the previous Roof BTR of 1983 which itself was a heavily modified Porsche 911, and would remain unbeaten until 1987, after which the Roof CTR, an updated version of the BTR, would surpass it with a top speed of 213 miles an hour. As required by Group B regulations, which demanded a minimum of 200 production units to be built in order to stop larger car firms from creating an overpowered one-off rally car, Porsche put the 959 on sale at $225,000, or 577000 in 2022 with 337 units built and sold by 1988, of which 29 were the upgraded 959 sports variants that, aside from their 508 horsepower engines, utilised conventional coilover suspension, no air conditioning, and no stereo in order to maximise its track racing abilities, resulting in a 220 pound weight cut and a more intensive driving experience. The vast majority of 959 sold during this period being street legal cruisers for the world's super rich. Unfortunately, the Porsche 959 never managed to enter the Group B rally as per its very design purpose, as due to the length of its development and a hesitancy by Porsche to even deliver the car, Group B racing had been wound up in 1987 following a series of horrendous crashes, including a Ford RS200 slamming into a wall of spectators in 1986 at the Portuguese rally near Sintra, killing three people, and the deaths of Henri Tiovenen and his co-driver Sergio Cresto in the 1986 Tour de Course, when their Lancia Delta S4 plunged down a ravine and caught fire, with both men unable to escape the overturned car and burning to death in their seats. Regardless, the Porsche 959 did see some rally action during its time, most famously with the 1986 Paris to Dakar rally, a gruelling 6,200 mile run across the European continent and the Sahara Desert to the Senegalese capital, with three cars entering, this superb machine achieving a first, second and sixth place win 
while during that same year, a track-modified version of the car, dubbed the Porsche 961, made its debut at the 24 Hours of Le Mans, finishing first in its class and seventh overall, later partaking in the IMSA Championship in the United States and the 1987 Le Mans. Although the two latter races yielded no success, the 961's participation at the IMSA ending early due to tyre problems, while at the 1987 Le Mans, Canadian Dutch driver Kees Nierop misshifted from sixth into second gear and crashed into a guardrail, followed by a post-crash fire that destroyed the car, although it was later repaired and put on display at the Porsche Museum. While production of the 959 officially ended in 1988, in 1992, eight further cars were assembled, using spare parts at Porsche's Zuffenhausen plant, creating a new limited production run of 959 Comfort models, which were rumoured to have been instigated by a wealthy collector in Macau, who was willing to pay $700,000 per car, four being painted in red, the remainder in silver, and are today by far the most sought-after 959 models. This isn't to say that the Porsche 959 was considered acceptable all across the globe, as most famously, Porsche had never designed the car to meet US federal crash legislation, nor did they ever provide the Department of Transport with four test mules for destructive crash tests in order for it to be allowed use on the American public highway, which, combined with it not meeting US emissions regulations, meant the car was illegal to import into the USA, the most high-profile example of which was with Microsoft founder and billionaire Bill Gates, whose 1988 Porsche 959 was seized by the Customs Service upon its arrival in America, although thankfully, unlike other illegally shipped automobiles, the car wasn't destroyed, and instead placed in storage for 13 years. Eventually, the Show or Display Act was introduced from August 13, 1999, allowing usage of the car limited to 2,500 annual road miles, and Gates was allowed to take possession of his 959 once again, although it wasn't unknown for other 959 customers to have their Porsches snuck into the country under the noses of the US Customs Service, usually in the back of articulated lorries driving up across the Mexican border. While in order to meet US emissions regulations, retired racer turned high-profile car dealer Bruce Canaper introduced a reworked ECU, a modified exhaust system and turbochargers from 2003 in order to reduce the car's output, and now a number of 959 examples have entered the USA legally and have been modified by Canaper's updates. Today, the Porsche 959 is seen as a masterpiece of automotive engineering as while the car was unfortunately not able to partake in its original Group B rallying role, it did present an incredible mixture of technology and lightweight design elements that made it the world's fastest production car, its many mechanical and construction facets even being implemented on later production versions of the regular Porsche 911 lineage, starting with the Porsche 993 of 1994, which even took a few styling cues from its 959 predecessor. In the end, the Porsche 959 was the barnstormer that began a new trend in supercars, this sublime work of engineering illustrating how far supercar and hypercar technology had come from the somewhat archaic design principles of the late 1970s and early 1980s, forcing other car makers across the globe to match this incredible machine and bring home the title of world's fastest production car.